Just waiting on a nice gust of wind. There it comes to properly display the flags. Come on, wind, blow. You almost had it. There it goes. Dun, 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 dun. Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here, coming to you from Santa Clarita, California. And just off Newhall Avenue, just past Hart Park is the destination that we will be diving into today. Heritage Junction Historic Park. A lot of the structures and buildings that we will be seeing were moved from other parts around this area, but they have a rich, deep history, and quite a few of them were used in some TV shows, movies that you may recognize. Let's get over there. Join me. Shall you? Their hours are from 1 to 4 p.m. just on the weekends, Saturday and Sunday. So if you make the trip, make sure you plan accordingly. This is the party house, not party like you're thinking. The last name of Ed was P-A-R-D-E-E, -E, and it's been here since 1992. But a hundred years before that, it sat elsewhere, saved and moved to this property. Used in some of the old westerns. In fact, John Ford used it in the first couple of his films when it was at its original location in the 1940s. A telephone company utilized it as one of their bases for operation. Looks basically the same. The stairs have been shifted to a different spot and it's now used for storage. Tom Mix, one of the first popular serial TV cowboys, used to use the backyard of the former property for Mixville before he moved his base of operations to Glendale could be found behind this home. At the base of the back porch wooden staircase is an information placard that states that William Edward Party, who was the constable, was very strict. If he caught a suspect, he would take him to a tree, chain them up until the trial. If they were exonerated, he turned them loose. If they were convicted, he would hang them from the tree. That's harsh. He also passed away in this very home, January 21st, 1914. You have to wonder how many hours he spent relaxing on this very porch, contemplating how he was gonna uphold the law with a very stern hand. This very impressive homestead dates all the way back to the year 1875 when it was first purchased by Mr. Henry Newhall. A later residence of the property was a nominee for the presidency of the United States, Henry Clay Needham, who fell very ill, which, looking at this, may have altered the decision for him to run. And he passed February 21st, 19... 36. It's also interesting to note that the purchaser of the house, Henry Mayo Newhall, is also what the town was named after. Here's a great old-timey photo of what it looked like back then versus what it looks like now. The most interesting fact I think about this was when they moved it in August of 1990. They took it from what is now a secondary parking lot at Six Flags Magic Mountain. That's where this building sat. True story. Look off to the left, you can see where the Sky Tower is. Basically, this was sitting where you now park your car before going into the amusement park. This faded guide map shows the layout of the land. Numbered nine different spots that you can visit out here with the corresponding number with the listing of what they are. But be careful when trotting because there are rattlesnakes, most likely all up through here, tucked away hiding in the shrubbery. Just be careful. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but this could quite possibly be the only outhouse that I've ever seen in my travels that has a placard 
on the sign of it designating its history, perhaps? Donated to the Historical Society as an Eagle Scout project. You don't see too many outhouses with a plaque shoved on the side. That's different. Mitchell Schoolhouse Adobe. I always try to do a little research before visiting places and going to locations. But you can always learn a lot more by actually visiting them, especially when said places have information on site like this. You can read up and learn as you go all about what you're looking at. Not every place does it, but I sure am thankful for those that do. According to this, parts date all the way back to the 1860s. Wow. Since they're open today, I think I might be able to go inside some of the facades. First thing, I just kind of want to meander around and show the exteriors, and we'll just see how the day progresses. Name the Edison House dates back to the early 1900s. It's been in this spot since 1989, but it was built by the Southern California Edison Company for their employees to live in while they worked. Check this out. One of the few times you'll probably ever see it snow in this region of California. They have their snow boots and skis on. And as best I can tell, when they moved the house, they put it together a little bit differently than where it originally was placed. You can see the stairs are on the opposite side. That window and that little top piece below the awning matches up, but it's just put together a little differently. I've been asked by a few of the volunteers that are out here if I want to step inside these houses and the church at the top of the hill and the little red schoolhouse. So, you know what? Why not? I was informed that there was five or six of these in a neighborhood. That's why the photo that I showed a minute ago did not match up. However, after closer inspection, this photo does match up. You can see the homeowner once again standing in the snow in front of this very structure. Yep, that's it. Nice. Themed around the period of the 1920s, they even have down here on the toilet this very unique seat. An old school bathtub. They really went the extra mile for the theming. I like it. You have a Raggedy Ann down here and a newspaper delivery boy. And I was told that I definitely need to step into the kitchen. Oh yeah, this is cool. There's some vegetables and fruit down in there. We got some vanilla extract, some baking powder in the cupboards and even some boric acid. No snow in that one. But this is definitely, definitely a throwback to say the least. You got the milk bottles down there and bullion cube. Oh my gosh, bullion cubes? I always thought that was spelled differently. You don't see refrigerators looking like that too often anymore. Or phones that look like a face. You got the eyes and the nose. And what do you think's behind this door? Yep, it's an ironing board. Just across the way is the Kingsbury home, circa 1878. Let's go inside properly decored with furniture from the era and a piano. And if we look into one of the rooms, we got a mannequin in a rocking chair. It would heat the oven over here and also it would heat these burners all around. Um, and I, I think this is, this is just fascinating to me. This has its own, see the fire would come up in there. Oh yeah. And so it would come up, this would sit on here, although there is another cover. 
that you could take and put on there. But this is for the waffle oh, batter the waffle, in there. The waffle maker. Right. And then you closed it and you let it cook and of course it would brown on the bottom. You flipped it so that it could cook on the other side, on the reverse side. When it finished cooking, you could pull it open. Oh, Both wow. sides would be brown and you yeah, would have... Yeah, that's a neat idea. <laughs> I've never seen that before. No, neither at all. Can you guess what that is? There's a door here that won't come any farther forward, but it'll go up. But it won't come forward any farther because there's a block right there. So, the little mouse goes in there, oh. goes up here, because you put bait up in the top part, and then he gets to the edge, and he falls over into this, which they fill with water. And I was totally drown. expecting there to be a rat in there. <laughs> I have to admit, at first glance, when I saw this book, I thought it said, Diddy dumps a lot. But I misread it. It's just Diddy, Dumps, and Tots. This is pretty cool. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass. It's a good read. Well, they didn't want to put holes in the wall. Yeah, you didn't want to. You didn't want yeah. to put a hole in the wall, so you put it on the picture rail. Yeah. Up top. This is a cup board. It goes right. along the perimeter of the wall, right. where you keep cups and plates. And over time. The collections grew and that's where we got the terminology and the cupboard. So cupboard, the predating that, the cup board, a board that protrudes out the side of the wall. That's so neat. Very sun bleached, but you see the silhouette of the Ramona Chapel, given that name based on Helen Hunt Jackson's novel, Ramona. Candelabra, that's not a candelabra. That's a candle, that's a votive candle stand. You know, in, in the Catholic religion, they, people who are ill and don't want to die, or they have a friend who's ill and doesn't want to die, and they put a penny in the, or a couple of coins in the, the pot up here, and then they pray for that person. Because you couldn't, you know, you couldn't raise crops here. There's just not enough water. And so therefore, people would live on the ranches and the families would live, would be together. Uh, and you know, grandma, grandpa, the uncle, aunt, anyway, the kids. And they, so they would, because they were good Catholics, they had to go to mass uh, and be in church at least once a week. And so they built their own little family churches or chapels. And this was run by the chapel. And of course, there were itiner itinerant priests uh, in, you know, in the archdiocese, and uh, the itinerant priests would try to get around to each of the little churches as often as they could, but uh, they didn't. Uh, this, this is one of the reasons why we have so many uh, Hispanic priests, is be because of the fact that they were raised like this, and their father or grandfather actually held the mass. Uh, and uh, for the family. And the, those are, that's a votive candle stand. V O T I V E. Votive candles. candles. And people pray for other people's wealth or health or soul or whatever. Uh, and they usually contribute a couple of pennies or whatever they could. And uh, that was especially important in the Catholic Church. The, the colorful glass windows and the little niches and the, the church and the. Uh, the chap, pardon me, the Bible, and uh, all this, the altar, and all these little pews from a variety of different churches. And if you think that church was small, take a look at the little red schoolhouse, circa 1898. Six desks chalkboard designating 1492. Lessons include arithmetic, history, Abraham Lincoln. And they also use McGuffey readers. That's the third grade edition. 
sixth grade, second grade, and fifth grade. More than one grade in one facility. That's how it worked back then. You didn't have enough students for one class for one grade, so just threw them all in the same same classroom. Where it originally sat ended up being paved to form the Santa Monica Freeway. So it's now been moved here. Walking down the hill now towards the train station. Really looking forward to this ticket office. And the wind's blowing that sheet behind it. It's very haunting. The haunted ticket office. Ooh. Ooh. That's not the train station. The train station, the real one, is right there. In fact, you can see part of the locomotive to the right. This would technically be the back side where you would enter, but the tracks are on the opposite side. We'll go over there in a moment. Open September 1st, 1887. That was a heck of a long time ago. President Benjamin Harrison stopped over in April of 1891, and Teddy Roosevelt was met at the depot by the California governor back in 1903. Don't see water fountains like this too much anymore. All rusted and antique looking. Oh, that's good. Good and cold. I needed this. Oh, yeah. Looks as if this guy is working very hard here at his station. Got to make sure he presses that in the proper way. It would be very confusing. People could get very misunderstood if he did not know what he was doing. Some conductor hats here in the case. Gonna head now into the museum through this door. Gotta step down. Oh, we got the Duke there. We got some chaplain information. Mining artifacts behind this piece of glass is a miniature displaying that subject matter. If you look down in there, there's some mine carts, probably with gold of some sort. And then over here, oh yeah, there's one of the workstations here among the rocks. According to that orange sign on the wall, this is Buffalo Bill's trunk, which held four of his gold-plated revolvers during his world tour with his Wild West show up there on the top of that little shelf. Lots of exhibits in here, in cases, along the walls, indoors at the old train station. It's pretty cool. I'm guessing this room is used for events on occasions. They have a stage, some folding chairs. You have to imagine all the activity that took place in here way back in the day, back in the old cowboy days. I like those. Worry not, this is not an active rail line that I'm whoa, losing my balance off of. It's been closed for some time. Of course, across the fence to the left, that one is still quite operational. And this train used to ride along the route parallel to where I am meandering. It was used for years until it was donated to the historical property. Warning, do not get close when this is running. I'm allowed because it's, you know, it's shut off. So there is no danger unless I was to fall from these stairs. However, I made it completely unscathed. And take a look at this. All the bells and whistles and knobs. Ooh. I'm not sure what's down in there. But there is a rope. What happens if I pull this? It's tough to see 
from this angle. But that's the bell. You get a better view from down below. That's it, that's the bell that was ringing. No longer making any noises because I'm currently not up there pulling on the rope. Listen, shh, listen. You hear that sound? That's a bell not ringing. It was right against this very wall that I will now match up a couple shots from a Charlie Chaplin movie called The Pilgrim and a Frank Sinatra film titled Suddenly. There he is hanging out in this very spot. You see the name there, Suddenly, up on the awning. Would have been mounted right there about where the drainage pipe now is. You see the ticket window. Top left of your screen is a chimney. Looks a little bit different. It still has the hole for, you know, to smoke to be emitted, but back then it looked a little bit different than it does now. There you go. Flashback to the movie still. And there's Charlie, right there. Chaplin himself was also here in this scene being chased by an officer in this spot. Would have ran directly towards me. You could see all this very prominently. And as the police are in hot pursuit, the camera pans, Chaplin runs off straight that way. Even the awning and the door still look the same. There's the door and there's the awning. Of course, the train's there now, where here there was no train. Just disregard, disregard the train. Moving on, I was told I'm not allowed to enter the New Hall Ranch House, but the next best thing I could do is just meander up on the porch and try to peek in the windows. Currently doing a little work, and they said hopefully this will be opened again in the future, so maybe we could return at a later date and we could actually go inside. The way we listen to music certainly has changed since back then, right? Yeah, just a, just a little. Ooh, what's in here? Some cobwebs. Some cobwebs here. Oh, but it'd be attacked by cobs. That's gonna do it for today. If you're new here, please subscribe. By doing so, helps keep you in the loop and up to date on future adventures. I will be going on explorations just random. I, the whole time I'm saying this, I'm contemplating, I'm imagining that a snake is down here. Whoa, what was that? It wasn't a snake, it was a stick. But in my mind, it was playing tricks on me. Take it a step further, ring that notification bell. By doing so, it takes it a step further and definitely make sure, make sure Man, my mind is definitely playing tricks on me here amongst amongst the trees. I'll see you guys. Oh, oh, I think got in my ear. <laughs> it's hot out there. See, right there. That's sun. This is shade. It feels good, but I've still got the heat is like, it's getting to me. It shouldn't be this hot in Southern California, but it is. And it's slightly more humid than it has been in past years. You do you do your own Colombo-like research skills on why that is and get back to me, because I want to know. I'll see you guys in the next video. The vlog is... Did you enjoy this video? Give it a thumbs up. Let's me know. You care. This is probably the longest outro I've done in quite some time. That was good. I think that was good. I think that's a good one. Vlog over. Aha. Well, in the olden days, you didn't get up, well, the adults didn't get up and go outside to use the outhouse. Oh. Night. So instead, they used the chamber pot. Is that where the term came from? I don't know. I don't have a pot to piss in? Right. 